Hey everybody, Jay Glazer, and we are back after a short hiatus with another episode of Guidance by Glazer. And this is episode 39. We are wrapping up the year. I can't believe 39 episodes. I'm pretty stoked about it. Are you stoked about it? If you are, give us a heart or a thumbs up or just say something snarky because you're probably more inclined to do that anyway. We love to hear from you regardless of what you have to say. So drop a comment in the comment section. I believe we are doing this video live. Are we live? We're live today. So tune, tune in, tune on in, tune in for us, chime in. That was a combination of two words. And we're gonna talk today about opportunity zones. What are they and how will they impact your real estate in your market? Opportunity zones are a very, very new and hot topic and one I thought was relevant to discuss on Guidance by Glazer. So as you know, Trump, President Trump uh, initiated a massive tax reform and new policies um, and they were implemented in the beginning of 2017 and as uh, loads and loads of experts, accountants, financial advisors, economists, everybody is sort of sorting through this and combing through all of the changes, uh, one thing that came up was the new opportunity zones that exist. So what are they? They are part of a federal program uh, that were introduced with this tax plan. Um, so it's not necessarily the most overwhelmingly interesting topic, but it's important because it will definitely have an impact in your marketplace, especially here in New York City. And if you are in an urban setting, will have a massive impact. So we're, we, we wanna get into it. We're gonna talk about it briefly today, but again, Fair warning, not the sexiest topic we've ever talked about on Guidance by Glazer, but since I'm so sexy, it'll be fun. Just kidding. I'm not that sexy. Um, so, Opportunity Zones. As I said, new federal tax program uh, introduced in the new Trump tax reform. The purpose of these Opportunity Zones, so they say, uh, is to incentivize real estate investors and developers to build in low income communities. So essentially you have designated zones, hence opportunity zones, that uh, will be, um, there'll be certain incentives, which I'll discuss, that will convince developers um, and real estate investors to buy and build and develop a neighborhood, right? So to bring up uh, a certain neighborhood that might not have the um, influx of cash and equity that allows it to become a great neighborhood or revitalized neighborhood. So uh, what are these benefits? So the program will um, basically allow a developer to defer what's called capital gains. So when you sell a home, a property, investment, home, whatever it is, you have to pay capital gains tax. So if you leave the money in the zone, meaning you're really, really invested in the zone, that's what the incentive is, for at least 10 years, you will never have to pay capital gains. So if you were listening to our video when we did that with Andrew Luftig uh, Esquire, Mr. Andrew Luftig Esquire, we uh, talked about 1031 exchanges. And 1031 exchanges, the value there is you're basically rolling over your capital into a new property. So by staying committed to real estate investment, which is one of the lifebloods of the American economy, you essentially get a benefit of not having to pay capital gains. The opportunity zone structure is exactly the same. If you invest in this particular location, in, in a specific zone, for 10 years, you will avoid having to pay capital gains. So essentially, if you roll your money into a neighborhood, say you invest $10 million, $5 million, whatever it is, $100 million into a neighborhood, and you make a ton of appreciation on your property, you won't have to pay taxes on that. That is huge. That is a massive, massive incentive. So um, as a result, you are seeing huge, huge real estate funds being formed, an opportunity zone fund in the size of $250 million. I've seen $700 million. I've seen a billion dollar funds that are being formed, essentially collecting investors' money, their own money, pulling it all together to deploy capital into building and or buying into these zones because in 10 years, when they invariably appreciate, you will get massive, massive tax savings. Experts, as they say, estimate, estimate, they estimate, they estimate that uh, potentially in the span of these 10 years, you could have um, returns of over 44%. Don't ask me how my notes told me they got there because I don't have an answer for you, but assuming normal appreciation cycles in real estate, you could have a 44% return on investment. So 
I said, how does this impact you as a real estate buyer? If you have investment money, if you're interested in investing in New York City or potentially other marketplaces, this could be something where even though you're a small piece in one of these $100 million dollar billion dollar funds you could still benefit from so buying into a neighborhood that you're willing to hold on to the property for 10 years could be hugely beneficial to you as a, an investor so if you're if you're considering investing reach out to us and we'll walk you through this a little bit more and we'll also outline where the opportunity zones are so what makes something an opportunity zone to be eligible you have to be uh, in a neighborhood that 20% of the households are below the poverty line and the median income of these households cannot exceed 80% of the gross area median income. So essentially, as I started the conversation, the incentive is to develop lower income neighborhoods. Now, I'm not going to get into the socioeconomical position of how this impacts certain people, but the reality is you're essentially going to make a neighborhood that doesn't have a lot of money and you're going to make it a wealthier neighborhood. So as an investor, uh, it is an amazing opportunity. You're essentially getting uh, a huge tax break to essentially just build a neighborhood. Um, so it's kind of like um, when we had the, t uh, the 421A tax uh, program, which was an incentive to developers to build um, developments in certain neighborhoods because they were getting a, a tax break immediately up front. So this is more long term. So it's a more of a long term hold play. But at the end of the day, there's still huge incentives. So basically, what can you build in these zones? So you can build almost anything. If you're a developer who wants to do ground up condominiums, great, go for it. If you're a developer who wants to do a ground up rental project, great. If you just want to buy a building, rehab it, and rent it out, be our guest. The only things, it kind of makes me laugh, that you can't really uh, do is so-called uh, sin businesses. And what are said sin businesses? Well, one obvious one, if you know anything about Las Vegas, aka Sin City, is casinos. So you cannot build a casino. So if you're out there watching this right now and you're like, man, I really want to build that casino, you're not going to do it in an opportunity zone. So uh, I laugh because we're here in New York City and you can't build a casino in New York City. Obviously, if you're in an opportunity zone in an area that is uh, casino friendly, it might actually make sense. But you can't build a casino. And then the other sin business that you're not allowed <laughs> you're not allowed to build is massage parlors. So if you're a masseuse out there watching this, I think they're probably indicating a different type of massage. <laughs> but we won't get into those details. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's really kind of funny. Uh, can't build massage parlors. We'll just leave it at that. And then two other things that you can't build are uh, farms and golf courses. Again, not really a lot of farms and golf courses in New York City, so uh, not overly important. But going back to what you can build, develop, 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 or buy a property and simply hold on to it. So consider that. So in New York City, there are 306 opportunity zones. So again, as I started with the conversation, in major urban dwellings, you have obviously a ton of poverty um, and a ton of people living in those neighborhoods. So you're going to have a lot of opportunity zones. So for those of you listening in our marketplace in New York City, 306 opportunity zones. We will happily send you a map that we have found and pulled. It's not necessarily that easy to find this information uh, that we have found and pulled of these opportunity zones if you're interested. I have looked it over and there are actually some really, really intriguing neighborhoods that I wouldn't necessarily view as bad places to invest or up and coming. I think they're good neighborhoods now so they make an even more compelling argument for why you should invest in them. So reach out to us for that information. Drop your email or your contact information in the comments and we'll send it over to you or shoot us a message and we'll happily get that over to you. Um, that's pretty much it, folks. Property, property zones. Nope, opportunity zones is what they're called. If you want to find out more, reach out to us. As always, we appreciate you joining us. And you can find us on all the important social media channels, including the famous Instagram. Our handle is The Glazer Team. Facebook, which is how you're finding us now. So obviously you have a Facebook account. So follow us, Glazer Team, where you get juicy tidbits all the time from me and our team. And our website, which is chock full of fun if you're perusing the interwebs at night one day. Check it out, glazerteam.com. Tons of info on there as well. Thank you for joining us. And most importantly, before we shut off the camera, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. It's a wonderful time of year to reflect on all that we are thankful for. I'm thankful to you for watching this uh, and for letting me be your guiding by glazer light. Um, 
But actually, I'm really grateful for this time of year. Uh, I was walking down the street earlier, looking at some Christmas decorations. I'm usually very cynical about this kind of stuff, if you know me. But I was actually really thinking it's a, a really beautiful season and a really nice time to reflect upon all that we have in our lives. Obviously, as you know, there's been a lot going on in the world um, with fires and shootings. Again, not trying to get political, but there's been a lot of tragedy. And so be thankful for what you have. Thanks so much. Happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you after the holidays.